Guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be between Jayun and Machine. Machine starting the bottom right-hand corner as the white Zerg upper right-hand corner. We have Jayun starting as the yellow Protoss. This is going to be on Good Night, and I'm mixing it up a little bit, putting my face on screen to see if it adds anything or not. I'll be honest. I'm hoping that people say, nope, nope, didn't add anything. It was a distraction. Go ahead and get rid of it. Mostly because my, prefer uh, my preference is to remain anonymous as an ethereal voice in the background. But uh, if it adds something to the commentary, seeing the hovel from which <laughs> I cast, uh, I will I will continue. But otherwise, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure why I don't... I'll have to think why I don't like it more or not. Anyway, this is on Goodnight, which is one of the newer maps. Again, part of the New Worlds map contest. You're sending a probe scout out. We'll see if it goes bottom right first or not. Ursadon that's hallucinated in the middle. But you also have this double gas and interesting kind of mineral thing. That's kind of the interesting feature of it. Wide open middle... Otherwise, and this I actually did a slight recast. I'm going to go ahead and switch to uh, Jayun, I think, was hoping to catch this Overlord in transit to maybe sneak scouting information, but he was a little bit too early there, maybe because he's unfamiliar with this map, maybe because of the map distances. So instead, he's going to go ahead and drop a gateway, and unfortunately, this is going to result a little too clever for his own good. This is going to end up being a last positional scout for him. In the meantime, looks like we saw an overpool from Machine. And I want to sing these guys' praises. The, I actually know both these guys in person, and if I was going to put my face on a commentary for anybody, this, I mean, this is the people I'm doing it for. These guys are really amazing people, first of all. Extremely talented Brood War players. They've, both of them have generally been at the top of North America, although Jayun, top of North America, as Protoss, previously a Zerg. And they're just really fun to watch, honestly. So I highly recommend checking out both of their Twitch channels. You can check out Machine at Machine USA and Jayun at Jayun, which... Not with that spelling. <laughs> I'll, I'll link it in the description. And you will oftentimes see me when they are streaming, hang out in their chat. Looks like Machine's going to go ahead. This is interesting. He's sending up a drone scout. The Overlord, he's doing the same thing opposite direction, but it's working out for him. So the Overlord saw the pylon. So he's going to go ahead and back off. Drone scout is now making its way. So Jayun, maybe thinking he made a mistake, now finding that drone, skipping scouting that bottom left-hand corner, and is thinking, maybe I made a mistake. Now he's going to be able to go ahead and get that up, but he's already got Zerglings in his face, which is, first of all, going to delay the scout. He, do he does have a Zealot being built, but this is obviously not optimal scenario, and let's see if Machine can continue. He he's already revealed the fact that he's gone for an expansion. He basically, Jayun knows the early build here. The question is, is can he get follow-up information, specifically when that Vespin Geyser is being planted? And I think Machine is already wanting to take the 6 o'clock base. Jayun anticipating it, and already sending a zealot to that location. So that drone potentially going to lose its life. So it's down. And that's going to definitely delay that third hatchery. And that reveals additional information to Jayun that Machine was going for a quick third hatchery build. And he wanted to build it on location. Let's see if Machine... He's grabbed his extractor behind this. He's built a couple additional zerglings. Is still chasing down that drone. And now moving that drone out to the 3 o'clock location. It looks like Jayun is still trying to get that scouting information. I think he has a general concept of what's going on here. He's planted his nexus. There's two zealots on the front door. More zerglings pressing up. He's going to need to seal this front rapidly. He is doing so with that forge. But Jayun doing a fantastic job keeping that scout alive, getting all that information, doing blockade. But Machine able to slip through the top of that gateway positioning and able to get zerglings in the base. He does not have zergling speed upgraded. The zealots peeling off. But this might allow him to get some additional harassment done. Three o'clock base is being built. More Zerglings making their way that direction. I did not realize that was not a front door se uh, tight seal. Some nice drone drill on Jayun's part, taking one of the Zerglings down. And that just shows you his defense capacity. He's moving out with some additional Zealots, wants to put on some counter pressure. One Zealot has already made it into Machine's main. It looks like the Zerglings are misrallied, so he might even get some kills here. Now the drone's uh, getting in some action opposite direction. Jayun using that multitasking he's known for, going ahead and engaging those Zerglings in his front. So Machine... Falling a little bit behind. Also, the two Zelts starting to attack that hatchery at the 3 o'clock location. So there's action absolutely everywhere. None of it is working out in Machine's favor. He's already dedicated a large amount of larva to Zerglings. And the Zerglings haven't even... Well, first of all, they didn't manage to get a lot of harassment done in the main. We see just the leftover bits of a Zerglings. So basically, between the interior base harass of both players, Jayun did a much, much better job. So much so that it looks like Machine went ahead and pulled all of his drones off gas. Lost his hatchery at the 3 o'clock. This is disastrous for Machine. Jayun putting on an absolute clinic thus far. Zerglings 
pouring out, trying to engage these zealots. Now, keep in mind that front door still isn't sealed. So nice micromanagement from Jayun, and also peeling that zealot to the south. These two zealots look like they're going to be taken out, but this is, as they're fleeing, this is buying additional time. And actually, I think Machine might have been behooved to just let them run by, let the drones just tap them with their face to go ahead and kill them. One zealot left. There is a cannon on the front. Another cannon warping in. That zealot needs to, yeah, go up and plug that gap. Probe is actually moving out to go ahead and make sure that that scouting information remains out in space. But I think Machine's got sizable problems because that cybernetic score is up. There's going to be a Stargate behind that in not too long. And he has no semblance of any sort of anti-air. And he's still on two hatch. And his economy has already been very much stifled. Probe's continuing to sneak through. And I have a feeling and that you can see just the Probe's holding the wall. He Brilliant play here on Jayun's part. He knows that Machine's back is up against the wall, that he has to do some sort of all-in, essentially, to get back in this match. So he's going ahead and sealing off his front door, playing the more cautious game, getting that Stargate up. Drone continuing to hammer away at this. Hydral Sten is being built. So this is going to be a very, very, very delayed three-hatch Mutalisk. But Machine, I think, playing a little bit flustered here. That probe is once again... Man, Jayun's just staying on top of all of the scouting information. Is easily going to be able to walk in and see the 6 o'clock base not even finished as of yet. And I'm curious if he's going to... How many Corsairs he's going to dedicate. These Corsairs should be able to get some semblance of Overlord kill. But right now, if you look at just the raw economy of both players, you've got 31 probes on one side for Jayun and a measly 21 on the opposite corner. Now 20 for Machine. Machine has a lot of catch-up work to do. The Zerglings continue to hold position. They're just more or less playing a pseudo-contained situation here. Weapons 1 is being upgraded. Four Zealots still on the front. That Corsair coming out. My I'm almost curious how much damage that Jayun is going to be able to wreak. How much chaos he'll be able to wreak with these Corsair. Uh, looks like we do have that Hydralis Den being built. The other problem with dealing with this Corsair, it looks like there are going to be Hydralisks out in time. But that's more units that Machine was hoping to dedicate to rebuilding his economy. One thing I will say for Machine, by the way, is if you're going to look for a player to make an economic recovery and be able to get back in the match, Machine's your guy. Machine has always been known for his solid economic play and being able to just macro like a beast. And especially when he gets into that late game situation where he has like a huge army to really dedicate at all positions, he is very, very scary in those situations against any opponent. Only a single Hydralisk going to go ahead and try to engage this Corsair. I don't even know that Jayun's going to respect that single Hydralisk underneath. He probably, yeah, he can just reposition and go ahead and take that Overlord out. So Machine having trouble reestablishing his economy. That's going to put him into the red even further. More Corsairs being built, which I think is the right play. Additional gateways being plopped down. Honestly, I feel like Jayun is in such a strong economic situation. With all of the harassment, Machine being forced to shell up. Everything else looks like Lair being upgraded. That I honestly wonder if he could have just gone ahead and take his third, plopped a couple cannons down, and played from there. Only a single Zergling watching on the front. If he cleared that Zergling, uh, he's already and he's got those three cannons. I think this is the safer play, though. He's already 23 supply ahead. He's got uh, basically twice the economic output. The Corsair actually going up, and he, I wonder if he's thinking about that at this uh, in this situation. Using that Corsair to sneak to that top corner, seeing if there's any Zerglings there. Machine mostly sitting back in a, de a pure defensive situation. He has gotten additional hatcheries out. He's trying to transition to that five hatch Hydra play. But I believe what Jayun is going to transition into is just, yeah, Zealot Lake Speed with level one weapons. Looks like a pylon was taken out or canceled or killed someplace because Jayun all of a sudden in the red. Not sure it provoked that. A couple Corsairs moving to the six o'clock base. Creep Colony is there. It looks like it's going to morph into a sunken in anticipation of. Potential zealot timing attack. The Corsair is just really getting a lot of scouting information, scoping everything out. The Hydralisks working on getting their range upgrade. The other problem with the Hydralisks being pinned back by the Corsairs, especially in these like smaller corners where they don't really have maneuvering room, is once the zealots get on top of them with that level 1 weapons, which is already upgraded, level 1 armor uh, on the way. Zergling sneaking up, doing a little bit of harassment here. Uh, basically, the zealots, if they want to, which I don't think Jayun's going to opt to do, uh, well, that maybe not taking it back. I was thinking he was just going to sit back and play a little bit more defensively and go ahead and establish his third. It looks like he is going to opt to get aggressive. But if he can swing in here, especially at the 6 o'clock location, those Hydralisks, here the SimCity is pretty nice. And here, if the Zealots can manage to make their way in, there's not a lot of room for those Hydralisks to maneuver. So you just have to rely on them getting hung up on that SimCity. The Zealots pouring into the 6 o'clock location. One Corsair, or sorry, one Overlord there to detect. But there is no Dark Templar underneath, and the Zelch is pouring in. You can see the Hydralisks 
quickly melting to this. That Sunken Colony doing most of the damage. Now the Zealot's trying to transition across. Actually, I take it back that SimCity doing pretty well. Machine crashing in with the rest of his units. It looks like those Zerglings trying to sweep up, but this is a more economic harassment and more economic delay while Jayun continues to build his economy. So that actually I gotta I feel like Look, okay, a handful of drones killed, a sunken colony killed. Machine actually defended this pretty well, all things considered, in my opinion. He really does, it feels like he's running just with a skeleton crew. It looks like he's going to retransfer some drones. That Zealot trying to hunt down that last drone, run, drone, run. But there were a slew. Wow, as those Hydralisks moved out of position, that was a great play from Jay. And he's like, okay, you're going to move all those Hydralisks onto the Zerglings, specifically the Hydralisks, out of position. I'm going to go ahead and move my Corsairs over. But, ah, oh, huge shift in events. Two Corsairs getting picked out of the air. But in the midst of this, wow, I really wish Jayun hadn't dedicated that attack force because now he's going to go ahead and grab that third base. There is a Dark Templar out here. An Overlord, an Overlord speed is in place, but I don't think the single Dark Templar without the Zealot support is going to be able to, especially with the cannons are there, uh, not there, are going to be able to keep this third base up. And so there's a cancellation from Jayun. He's once again being boxed in to three bases. The Dark Templar... Now starting to move out and flee once again. It looks like two more Dark Templar, or sorry, one more Dark Templar and a Corsair are going to try to sneak into the 6 o'clock. There's not a lot to defend or protect here. A single Hydralisk being built. A single Hydralisk engaging that Dark Templar. So Machine, let's see if he's going to be on top of it to go ahead and draw out. I'm not even sure that he's aware. Oh, he is aware because he's moving all these Hydralisks back. But So Jayun having to cancel his third but making hay and going ahead and saying, okay, you're going to be, try to be spread out absolutely everywhere. I'm going to re-engage you at all of these locations with our Templar. So you have to push these units back. And initially chasing them down with those Zealots. The Corsair uh, doing a little bit more pressure. It's staying alive. And just moving, it looks like his Zealots midfield. He does have some High Templar. I believe he has Storm upgraded. But a high, Mutalisks are already up in the air. Potentially to pick those High Templar off. A nice heads up play there by machine and once again Jane gonna have to go ahead and back off especially because he lost those corsair in that previous engagement one high templar down finally getting to the protective cusp of those machines machine wants a second high templar not quite able to do so and it looks like he's gonna end up losing three mutalisks for his effort but what he's managed to do in the midst of this is force a cancellation at that third base Couple Zealots and a Dark Templar managed to sneak out. I think they're going to try to take another shot at this six. Machine once again redistributing those drones there. But essentially what Machine has managed to do is even though he's behind in the supply count, he's well behind, I believe, in the overall upgrades as well. Never mind, he got level one spines. Level one armor still... Sorry, level two weapons just finishing. Missed the timing there of it. So level two weapons, level one armor. So Jayun do, does have an advantage right there. More units pouring into the six o'clock base. He's just been punishing this base left and right. The drones fleeing once again. The Zealots trying to pick off a hatchery. I'm, I think they might be, actually get it here. It's going to be close. More Hydralisks pushing in. And again, Jayun starting to flood out with more Zealots. Six health left on that hatchery at the 6 o'clock location. More Hydralisks spawning in. And Jayun once again positioning his army midfield. He does have Corsairs overhead to deal with a potential Mutalisk counter. It looks like the Mutalisks is in position. The Corsairs... Being boxed out a little bit. Psy storming his own High Templar and his own Zealots because of these Mutalisks. And Machine doing a fantastic job of, despi of despite his position, honestly, keeping this High Templar count low. which is And just ex forcing all the expenditure of all of these Psy storms so he can gauge these Zealots wholesale and continue to box things in. He's behind in supply, picking off another Corsair overhead. This is, I don't know about this engagement for either player. The Zealots right on top of those Hydralisks. The Mutalisks trying to engage... As well, it looks like Machine going to go ahead and back off. Jayun has the closer reinforcement point, the higher up level weapons upgrades. And I, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, let's see how it plays out. It looks like Jayun's going to continue to be aggressive. I'm wondering if he's just going to pour at this stage of things, feeling that delay on his own third. If he's just going to start pouring troops in to try to take out this six. Okay, he's got more units starting to pour across. Took out his own gateway on the front door. He's got seven gateways in the background, which is damn near maxed out on two bases. Trying to peck away at this. More Hydralis starting to pour in. Now he's starting to back off and is moving that probe to go ahead and take his third, which just feels so late in comparison to all this. That does, if he can establish it and get it mining, that will put him ahead overall in this match. This is turning into a crazy one. It feels like both players kind of reeling from each other's attack and tech switches and everything else. Machine going in, taking out that probe. Let's see if the Dragoons and Corsairs 
can finish everything else off. The Hydralis... So the Mutalists trying to go through and pick off what they can. It looks like now that army is going to up, group up. I think that's going to force Machine to go ahead and back off. And I'm looking for Machine to go ahead and try to grab another base himself. He does have Jayun a little bit on his heels. Despite Jayun being up both in upgrades and uh, just are mostly because he doesn't have the composition that I think he wants. He doesn't have the Corsairs he wants overhead. He And oh, once again, the High Templar getting picked off. Really, it's the High Templar that have been mitigated. And it looks like, once again, the Corsair is going ahead, or sorry, the Hydral is going to go ahead and try to engage and peck away at this. Is he going to try to, he's forcing another cancellation on the third. Are you kidding me? Hydralis is engaging. I'm wondering if Machine's going to go ahead now that he's taking out that third back off with the rest of the Hydralis. It looks like he's just trying to do pincer attacks from the south and from the north to force these Zelts to try to dedicate one direction from the other and just peel in and micro from the opposite corner. More reinforcements starting to peel forward, but Machine losing a lot of this army as Jayun engaging right on top of it. Level 2 weapons is up for these Hydralis, but those Zealots are getting right on top. Now he's starting to kite. And another High Templar looks like it was getting picked off. Uh, it looks like it's going to be able to escape with just a sliver of health. And I believe, finally, with the army that's standing, Machine does not, and I don't know that Jayun's aware of this, Machine doesn't have any army left to throw to deny this third. And so it looks like, well, a little bit right there, but you can go ahead and clear that out. So it looks like he's finally moving up with a large army. He's going to go ahead and establish this base, which, woof, at the 16-minute mark-ish... His main's mined out. Natural expansion is looking thin. Machine's still effectively running off three base. The nature of Zerg. He's going to go ahead and finally get his third gas. He has a couple Zerglings pocketed, but I'm looking for him to go ahead and upon seeing this third, grab his fourth. Looks like he's going to go ahead and grab his fourth at that mineral only. Overlord getting killed overhead. Another Overlord a bit stray. Looks like it is going to sacrifice itself as well. Good Psy Storms now. Finally, the Psy Storms in position without those Mutalisks picking them off in large numbers. But some probes being caught in the rear by Machine. And more High Templar getting picked off. Machine's just done a fantastic job with kind of a... I mean, he's been behind in the overall supply count pretty regularly. And that hasn't been in worker count. That's just been in pure army, basically. And he's still done a fantastic job sneaking in and picking off just critical units. Here in both in probes and high templar and everything else it looks like jayun clearing out that 12 o'clock base he does have a sizable enough army in my opinion and with enough territorial coverage where he and it looks like he's distance mining already to go ahead and take that 12 in my opinion machine scooting up with his hydralisks he does have lurker tech in production it feels so late for lurker tech some psi storms catching those hydralisks as they're re-engaging the Hydralis once again finding this High Templar. Machine's just really been on top of just having next level mental movement of knowing where these High Templar are going to be exposed in Jayun's army and just sneaking behind the battle lines somehow and picking them off. A couple Zealots engaging there. It looks like Jayun wanting to get aggressive with this army. The good side storm, oof, obliterating the right hand side of Machine's army. Pressing down. Hydralis have peeled through. It looks like they want to try to force. Jayun to fall back. Unfortunately, I feel like for Machine, if Jayun just dedicates with his attack force, he might just be able to run Machine just straight over. Having a little bit of trouble splitting this. A great side storm again at what I think is a rally point on Machine's front. And the Zealots continuing to careen forward. Now the Hydralisks engaging at that mineral only. It looks like a Corsair has managed to sneak into that base as well. Here's the thing, though. Even though Machine's going to go ahead and press up and potentially take out that base, he's going to end up losing, effectively, his natural expansion and his main for the effort. The Hydralist then getting obliterated. Machine down to 50 supply, and I think this is going to be all she wrote. Jayun having enough of this and just going ahead and deciding, like, you know what? I I've had enough of the backstab. I've had enough of my High Templar getting picked off. I'm just going to ram my army down your throat and wipe this out. Spotting pool being worked against. Sunken Colony desperately being built for Machine. Natural expansion is completely wiped out. The Hydralisks picking away at probes that are distance mining. Now keep in mind, this mineral only is up. The, the layer has been taken out. It is possible that Machine might be able to evacuate and build things at other locations to sneak back in this match. But he's going to need to get his tech up at some other location. Otherwise, he's going to be drastically set behind. Spire's gone. Layer's still up. Six o'clock base. I don't see any tech that's been plopped there. There are additional drones to that bottom right-hand corner. 
things are not looking good for a machine, I will say. Jayun, if as long as he stays on top of this and can just cycle around and pick up all these bases, he will be able to win this match. And machine gonna call GG right there. I think you're realizing, okay, that things would uh, things <laughs> were finally getting picked off. But I gotta say, I felt like Jayun had that early lead and kept that lead for most of the match. But machine really made a match of it. He really did a great job of playing from behind and fighting things. I also want to give a shout out to Whip if you go to Whip Schmacks. Schmacks, not with the H, just Whip Smacks on uh, Twitch TV. He is out there as well. Check out all three of these guys. Let them know that I sent you, that I'm sending the love to them. Uh, love these guys. These are, actually, if you guys see this, love you guys. Uh, they're just amazing players. Really pillars of the community is my feeling of it. Anyway, check them out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will move on to the next game in the NA Team Battles, and unless people have a desperate desire for seeing me on camera i'll go ahead and take the camera off let me know your opinion on it whether you think it added anything or not hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening